Okay, last night we left off where Fudge had wrecked his bike. He was in the nurse's office and he was pretty upset about that. And he is getting ready to find out who is coming to visit at his school. All right. Who is it, Fudge asked. It's a very famous man. Someone who writes and illustrates children's books. His name is Brian Tumpkin. Brian Tumpkin is alive, Fudge asked. Alive and well and on his way to our school. Brian Tumpkin is alive, Fudge said again. I never knew that. Did you know that, Pita? I never thought about it, I said. Mr. Green faced Miss Elliot and said, Lucky break for all of us that he's agreed to do a program for our girls and boys. Where's this cow? I'm afraid I don't know who he is, Miss Elliot said. Where's this uh, cow? What do you think Fudge is going to respond to this? How do you think Fudge he's is going to respond to this? Naughty. You think he's going to be naughty, Allie? Yeah. <laughs> okay, let's find out. Then you must be dumber than I thought, Fudge told her. First, you put peroxide on my cuts without blowing to take away the sting. And now you don't know who Brian Tumpkin is? I never blow on cuts, Miss Elliot said. You can spread germs that way. Mommy always blows when she puts on peroxide. Yes, well, Mr. Green said, let's get back to our classrooms now. It's almost time for our special program. At 10 o'clock, we all filed into the auditorium. Then Mrs. Morgan, the librarian, introduced Brian Tumpkin telling us that millions of kids have read and loved his books and how lucky we were that he was able to make a last-minute stop at our school. Brian Tumpkin walked on stage. He was tall with gray hair and a gray beard. He waved to us. Then he turned and beckoned to someone backstage. I've brought a friend with me, he said. Come on, Uriah. Hurry up. The boys and girls are waiting for you. Nobody came out on stage, but Brian Tumpkin pretended that Uriah had. He pretended to be holding Uriah's hand, and he kept talking to him as if he were really there. I thought, either this guy is really wacko, or he's a great actor. Finally, he looked out at the audience and asked if any of us saw Uriah. Someone down front called, I see him. I didn't even have to look to know who that voice belonged to. You see, Brian Tumpkin told the rest of us, one of you can see Uriah. Come on up here, young man. Next thing I knew, Fudge was on stage. I slid down in my seat. What's your name, young man? Fudge. That's an unusual name, Brian Tumpkin said. I know it, Fudge said. How would you feel about helping me out today, Fudge? It's a real privilege, Fudge said. I couldn't believe it. He finally learned how to use the word. You could see that Brian Tumpkin was impressed. He said, well, it's a real privilege for me, too. That makes it unanimous, Fudge said. My, you certainly have an impressive vocabulary, Brian Tumpkin said. I learn a lot of words at home. That's wonderful. Some of them I'm not allowed to say in school. Some of them my bird can say. His name is Uncle Feather. I slid lower in my seat. What grade are you in, Fudge? Brian Tumpkin asked. Kindergarten. Wonderful. Who is your teacher? I started out in Ratface's class, but now I'm in Miss Ziff's class. She's a lot nicer than Ratface. I covered my face with my hands. Uh, let's get on with our chalk talk now, Should, shall we? Brian Tumpkin said. What's chalk talk, Fudge asked. I'm going to sit down at my easel, Brian Tumpkin said, walking across the stage, and you're going to describe a person to me, and I'm going to draw the person you describe. Do you think you can do that? Yes, Fudge said. It's a man. Mommy, I'm more of this piece. I don't know how. Okay. Oh, I'll need more help than that, Brian Tumpkin said, picking up a piece of chalk. Is he tall or short? He's tall, Fudge said, and he's got a fat belly that hangs over his pants, and he's mostly bald, but he's got some hair around the edges. And he wears glasses, and he's got a pointy nose and a mustache that curls down around his mouth. Brian was drawing as fast as Fudge was talking. And he's got a crooked front tooth. And his feet are very long, and he walks like this, Fudge said, giving us a demonstration. Like a duck, Brian Tumpkin asked? Yes, Fudge said. All of a sudden, I knew who Fudge was describing. I wanted to get out of the auditorium as fast as I could. But then Fudge looked out at the audience and called, Where are you, Pita? I can't see you. And I knew that I couldn't get up without everybody looking at, at, without having everybody look at me. So I slouched down as low as I could and didn't answer. Pita, can you see me? I let out a groan. Joan, who was sitting behind me, giggled. I can't find my brother, Fudge told Brian Tumpkin. You'll find him later, Brian Tumpkin said. Now, you haven't told me what this man is wearing. Oh, Fudge said. He's wearing a blue suit, a tie with stripes, brown pants and brown socks and brown shoes and brown laces. Brown shoelaces, Brian Tumpkin repeated. Okay, there we are. He brushed off his hands and held up the picture. Does he look like anyone you know, Fudge? Yes, Fudge said. 
Who, Brian Tumpkin asked. Mr. Green, Fudge said. The audience laughed. Brian Tumpkin smiled. Who is Mr. Green? The principal, Fudge said. Now the audience roared. Oh, dear, Pro Mr. Brian Tumpkin said. Oh, my. He put his hands to his mouth, and you could see that he was trying hard not to giggle. Mr. Green went up on stage then and introduced himself to Brian Tumpkin. They shook hands. Mr. Green said, I think it's a wonderful drawing, and I'd like to have it for my office. Would you sign it for me? Certainly, Brian Tumpkin said. I'm very glad you liked it. He signed his name across the drawing and handed it to Mr. Green. Everyone clapped. Then Fudge said, Mr. Green, was this a catastrophe? And Mr. Green laughed and said, Not quite, Fudge, but I'm sure you'll try it harder next time. I was sure, too. So what do you think? Is Fudge nothing but trouble still, or has he grown up a little bit? All right, leave your comments down below. Grayson and Allie, can you say hi? Hi, Fudge. Hi, Fudge. <laughs>